Hey guys, uh, in this particular video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the show hide buttons in InDesign to create interactivity, uh, sort of like you would find in a, uh, in a website where from you can see by this layout that I have here that I have what I would consider my thumbnails over on the left hand side and then I have large images over on the right hand side. So the idea behind this and the way that I want to use it is that when the user comes over here to the left hand side and they click on one of these thumbnails and I have mine set up in triangles to do something a little bit different to uh, uh, possibly inspire instead of using rectangles. Um, so I have them set up in, in triangles so that when the user comes over here and they click on one of these triangles, one of these buttons, um, over on the right hand side, the image is going to pop up, you know, similar to what we would see on a website. So uh, this is all going to be self-contained within a PDF file. And um, it adds a little bit of uh, uh, interactivity for the user and uh, allows us to create a presentation all within one page of a document. So uh, again, I have the setup of I brought the images in already for the thumbnails. I'm not bringing in all 20 of the photos of the large uh, photos on the right hand side. That's a bit too much uh, for this little demonstration, but hopefully you'll be able to get the idea from it. Now, unfortunately, when we bring the images over on the right-hand side, they're all going to be stacked up on top of each other. There's no way to, to turn them off unless you put them on different layers and you turn off the visibility of the layers. But I'm not doing that in, the, in this instance. I don't need to have 20 different layers for that. So it's just going to be a matter of managing uh, the images that you have. So as I uh, discussed in class, it might be... Uh, beneficial to you to bring all of your images in to have everything imported in before you actually start the interactive process the the process of creating buttons okay now in order for this to work in order for this show hide to work uh, what we need to do is we need to have these large images that are over here on the right hand side set up as buttons as well as the thumbnails that are over on the left hand side so um, I'm going to begin by uh, clicking on this one because I've already set up the ones that are behind here. I have like four other ones, four other photos behind this photo of Yalu here. Um, they're already set up. So I'll just demonstrate with this one. So with this one selected, I'm going to go over to the Buttons and Forms panel. Now the Buttons and Forms panel will be found under your window menu under Interactive Buttons and Forms. Okay, so selecting the image once again, coming over to the bottom of the Buttons and Forms panel, and down here on the lower right-hand side, second from the right, is a little icon to convert this into a button. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Um, it lets me know at the top that this is set up as a button. I can change the name of it, which is a really good idea. I, I encourage you guys to rename all of your images. Um, and use the same name for the thumbnails as well, but use something to uh, decipher the two of them. So for this particular one, I'm going to call it Yalu. And uh, very important, we need to have this set as hidden until triggered. So come down here and put a check mark in that hidden until triggered option. This way, this whole right hand side will be white until we click on the buttons over here on the left. Then the images will pop up. And when you click on the next button, one image will go away and the other will appear. Okay, so it's uh, really important that we have this set to hidden until triggered. Now I'm going to set up the thumbnails over on the left-hand side. So since I have Yalu here, I'll just begin with Yalu's. I'll go ahead and click on her thumbnail. And while it's selected, I'm going to go over to the buttons and forms. And I'm once again going to click on that little icon that will turn this into a button. Under Appearance, I can set this to have rollover effects as well. So as the user rolls over them, something else, some other type of interactivity can occur as well. Uh, we talked about that in a different class in a, a previous video, and I'm not going to demonstrate that right now. Very important. Once again, we rename the buttons. So in this case, what I'm going to use here is TN for thumbnail. That's going to be my indicator that this is the thumbnail, so I don't have two buttons that are called Yalu. One is going to be called Yalu, and the other one is going to be called TN um, hyphen uh, Yalu. So TN for thumbnail. So I will type in a name once again. Now, under it, we have an event. 
So this is the event when the user is um, uh, applying the interactivity on release or tap. That's the default, and that's what I'm going to use for this. We can choose on click, on rollover, or so on. Next up, we got to set an action. What is going to occur when the user releases or taps, uh, rolls over, whatever it may be? What is the action going to be? And you can have multiple actions if you like. So I'm going to click on that. The action that we're going to use in this instance is show hide buttons and forms. Okay, so when we click on this particular option, it's going to allow me to show Yalu's image while everything else remains hidden. But here's where it becomes a little bit tricky. So we see all the, um, the large images here. Uh, Yalu down at the bottom, Malian Cemetery Passion. Um, they all have X's in them. So the X is uh, to ignore. There's three icons down at the bottom. One is an eyeball, that's to show. The other one is an eye with the slash through it, and that's to hide it. And then the X, which is on by default, is to ignore. We don't want to ignore the images. We want to, we want to make sure that we turn off all the other images that we do not want to have showing at the time. So I only want to have Yalu showing at this particular time. So I'm going to go to her image, the one that doesn't have the TN next to it, and I'm going to click on this, and this will toggle you through all three of them. So if you just click on this box right here, it'll toggle you through the three options. So I want to set the eyeball to show. Now what I need to do at the same time is I need to disable all the other ones. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to start with tank, and I'm going to click a couple of times to set them to the eyeball with the slash through it. So those four are now going to be disabled. If I want to test this out, because again, unfortunately, InDesign is not going to um, hide all the images here. If I want to test this out, though, I don't have to leave the application to do so. Down on the lower left-hand side of buttons and forms, you have this little icon here. If you go ahead and click on that, that opens up the EPUB interactivity preview. Now, when it opens up, this is what it would look like in Acrobat when a when the PDF is completed. It should open up, and this area should be blank unless you have something in the background that you want to have showing. So the area is going to be blank until the user does something over here. In this case, I click on Yalu's thumbnail, and her photo appears. All right, now I didn't set any of the other ones up yet, which I'll do in a moment. But if I were to go to another image and click on it, then Yalu would disappear and the other image would appear. And that's the idea behind the show hide. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this, put it out of the way for a moment because we're going to come back to it. And I'm going to jump over to another one of the uh, uh, images that I have here uh, of Tank. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process. You click on the thumbnail first, go to your buttons and forms, Click on the icon on the uh, lower right-hand side to turn this into a button. So I go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go up to the top here to rename it, TN for thumbnail, and then put in the name of the uh, um, file that's associated with it or the photo that's associated with it, in this case, tank. I'm going to go down to the action, and I'm going to select Show Hide Buttons and Forms. I want tank to be visible click on it to show the eyeball, and then all the other ones I'm going to click a couple of times to disable. I have to go down for Yalu's, which is a little bit lower in the, in the order here um, because of how I did it, how I put it together. And now I have a couple more, and I'll just go ahead and quickly do these once again. This one's already set up as a button. All I have to do is create the action or add the action for it. Okay, so I've set all the buttons up. I've set up a handful of buttons here. And once again, I'm going to go back into the EPUB interactive interactivity preview. Uh, I can open this dialog box up. Now, when you've gone through it one time uh, and you've made additional changes, you're going to want to refresh the screen here. So down on the lower left, just click on the play button. That will refresh the screen. Uh, again, hopefully you're going to go back to a plain white screen. If you do have a photo showing here, that photo was not set up to be hidden until triggered. All right, so just make sure you go back in and put a check mark in that box. So uh, I set up, like I said, I set up a handful of them. And this is what's going to happen when you click on the buttons there. Okay, and you would do that for all, uh, or I would do this in this instance for all 20 of the buttons to have all 20 of the images show. Okay, now once they're all finished with this, 
uh, in order to really test it, we're going to need to export this out. Okay, so we're going to export this next as an interactive PDF file. So under the File menu, go to Export, shortcut is Command E. From the drop down menu for Format, we're going to make sure that it's uh, set to Adobe PDF Interactive. And I'm going to save it back into the same folder where I have everything else, all my other materials. I have in the one folder my large images, the ones that are on the right hand side. Uh, my thumbnail images, and also the logo as well, which we could add interactivity to. Um, I'm just not doing it for this demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a PDF. So go ahead and hit OK. All right, now while the PDF is being created, when it opens up, it opens up in preview. All right, now you'll notice that when I put my cursor over the button here for Yalu, it changes into that little hand a little finger pointing but when I click on it nothing happens all right preview does not support this interactivity so this is not a good place to be viewing our PDF files what I'm going to do is open up this folder and I'm going to take that PDF that I just created and I'm going to open it up in Acrobat Pro now when it opens up in Acrobat Pro I had it set up to um, open up in full screen so it's open up in full screen here and now we'll see that once again when I put my cursor over the image, the little hand appears, the little finger pointing up appears, which indicates that something is going to happen when I click on this. If I had it set to a rollover, the image would roll over. And now when I click, now Yellow's image should open up as it does right now. Go to another one. So each one of these photos is going to switch over to the, um, the properly associated image for it. And this is how you use the show hide buttons in InDesign to create this interactivity. So good luck and I will see you in the next video.